Okay, today we're gonna get started on the toilet. We got it in place where we wanna put it. And then we're just gonna go up to the ceiling, put it, bent it up here, and then through another room, and then up through the roof. Yeah, where are you? Down here. Okay. <clears throat> so here's the venting. Out here. We're gonna come up. Uh, this is the fresh air intake. So this one we'll just send down in the basement and grab some fresh air. Um, we chose the electric model, so not a, not a huge deal. Uh, we then have our condensate plug, so any condensation that builds up in here, we can just, um, we'll vent that downstairs to the, just to our sewer. So I got these, um, these wall clamps and this is the, uh, this goes around the venting, um, both with three eighths ready rod. So we're just gonna mount these on here and uh, get our vent cured here and here. And then we'll uh, start drilling some holes in the roof. What do you got? A pop. You drinking pop? Where'd you go? You're drinking my pop, okay. All right. We get these mounted. I got the lines all all measured. Whoa! So we got our three clamps. We're gonna go three here, and then upstairs. There's like a little. It's where the roof line. There used to be a bathroom there, um, but we'll throw one more support up there. And then it'll penetrate through the roof and um, should be plenty of support. So next thing I'm gonna have to do is, uh, I got the ready rod. So I'm gonna have to cut this way shorter. I'll thread it in here. So it'll go something like that. And we'll get our we'll get our supports on. Just got the uh, ready rod cut. Um, I just use like a sawzall or just a just a hacksaw. Um, you just got to be careful of the edges. See if you get these little burrs on there. It might not thread in, so you might just have to file them down just to make sure they uh, they thread in properly. I'll adjust all the supports afterwards. Right now I'm just trying to get a, a sense of where, where this is gonna go up so I can drill my holes up in the roof. Um, so I get the supports lined, I can adjust, you know, this way after. Um, yeah. Hmm, I like it, I think that'll work. Okay, quick toilet update. We got a lot of the work done behind it, which is venting for our hot water tank, or our on-demand hot water heater, um, the sewer stack, the vent stack, um, electrical. There's a bunch of stuff going on behind this, so um, it's been a little delayed um, getting this in, but we got it all now. This is our vent stack for our sewer. Um, this is our plug-in. For the toilet. This is the air intake. So we'll draw fresh air from the basement, which we will get out from a, um, a fresh air source. This is a, a condensate hose. I just used a, I don't provide one, so I used a pool hose um, that I can move up and down. So when I need to pull this thing out for maintenance, I can. Um, we then have connected to our vent stack, which goes all the way up. And we'll plug it up here, go through the roof. Uh, this hole is going to be for a bathroom fan, which we're going to mount basically right here. We're going to build a uh, 
build a structure around this. And uh, yeah, it's looking pretty good. I'm pretty excited to start using this thing. I'm up in our little crawl space. Below me is uh, is the bathroom. So these are all our venting for the bathroom and stuff. Um, so what I want to do now is line up the toilet venting, and then I'm going to drill a uh, you know a small pilot hole in the roof. And then I'll climb up on the roof and drill my big hole. So you just want to kind of have it something like this. And I've already marked it out so I know where my pilot is. And uh, see if we can see some sun. Using this big drill bit, but I actually need to use an extension. Perfect, I can see the sky. So we now have a hole in our roof and need to get this done while we have a sunny day because the next week's calling for rain. So let's get up on the roof and uh, cut a bigger hole. Okay, now we're gonna do the venting for this toilet. Um, I've got our flashing, I'm just cutting it out to the size of the pipe. Um, and then we'll stick our pipe through the ceiling Put this on and seal it all up. A chainsaw garbage. Finally got power to our toilet. Uh, now we're gonna go through the startup procedure, run it through a cycle, and uh, see how she works. For the startup, they recommend just putting in a bowl liner, about five cups of water, a little bit of toilet paper, and run it through its cycle, make sure it's performing properly. Um, so we're gonna do that. So this is where the ashes are kept. So you kind of press these buttons, this pops out. A little strap in here, you have to remove this strap set the toilet. So, let's see if I can find something to cut that with. It's giving me a warning, because it's at a container, so we'll put it back in, see if it sits properly. Okay, we're gonna run through the startup procedure says to lift the lid, put a bowl liner in, five cups of water, three feet of toilet paper, This. Close the lid. Press the flush button. So now it's run through its cycle. It takes about an hour to do do a cycle, but. So far, it's not really that loud. Um, it's mostly just a fan. So we'll let this do its cycle, and then at the end, we'll check this ashtray, and we should just have white ash. So let's hope that works. 
So I got this thing still running behind me. Um, it's not very loud, so I'm okay with that. Why we chose to go with this toilet, an incinerating toilet, is because although we are on an island surrounded by water, water is a problem here. We, we only have a 50-foot dug well. Um, it's super expensive to dig wells. You're hit or miss. It's like $10,000 per attempt just to drill the hole. If you don't get water, you're paying again. So we thought, well, look, we just do whatever we can to conserve water, collect you know, water from the roof, rainwater, and just use it um, the best we can. So we chose this, which uses no water. Maybe just a, a little bit to, to rinse it out every once in a while, um, if there's not enough in it to do an incineration. We also chose the electric model uh, versus the gas model because, um, you know, someday we'd like to be off grid and being able to, we don't want to rely on getting propane. We can't make our own propane, so, if there was ever a shortage of propane and we can't run our toilet, that's a problem. Whereas if we have solar panels, um, as long as the sun keeps shining, we're, we're good to keep flushing our toilet. Or flushing or pressing our toilet, I don't know what to say anymore. The next big reason is we have a 40 year old septic field and it will need to be replaced eventually. And that is a huge cost. You know, you're looking maybe 30, 40 grand for a septic field, $6,000 toilet, um, we've now, separated all of our human waste and uh, we can completely uh, you know focus on setting up a gray water system which goes back out into our plant so it's all we're looking ahead down the, down the road to see make sure what we want to do on this property and with this house um, which is to be off grid and uh, use as much as of the um, resources as we can i know some people don't want the electric and the solars it is a huge drawer of power this is 240 volts but we make that up in other ways. Um, we try not to use our dryer. We actually don't even own a dryer right now. Um, we remove our stove and we just have a unique stove that is has no electricity, just gas and um, you know 12 volt batteries. Um, if we need to, um, you know, run out of gas, we can still have a separate cooking source, which would be wood. So we're just trying to have backups to backups and and. Uh, Go from there so now this thing's still running behind me um, i'm gonna let it back and I'll, I'll check in with you guys when it's all finished and we'll have a look inside all right so the toilet has finished its incineration process press the button take this off it's still pretty hot And as you can see, this is full of ash. By the way, this is not um, from just the initial startup cycle. This is probably after using it for maybe two weeks. So two weeks of waste in this little container. That's everything. Another cool feature about this toilet is that it will tell you, let me put this back in first. It will tell you when this tray is full. Um, it'll give you a little warning and says empty tray, uh, which is convenient in case you forget. Uh, this one's probably ready to be empty, so um, I'll probably em we'll empty this one. Uh, but, but realistically, I think we're only going to have to empty it once a month. All right, guys, thanks for watching. Um, if you're considering getting an uh, incinerating toilet, I highly recommend it. Um, it is a great way to conserve water. Um, super simple to use. Uh, we think they look great. Um, and really, overall, um, a very good product. So we are, are definitely happy with our purchase. And uh, again, thanks for watching.